this uh, uh, material has been uh, jointly prepared with uh, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, uh, Dr. Ashish Choudhury. So this is uh, this short course, this uh, 4.5 5 hours, is uh, just based on uh, a course, a proper course offered at Triple ITB called uh, Foundations of uh, Cryptography by Professor Ashish Choudhury. So this the this is the uh, course site. And of course, from the institute site also, you can get go to Professor Ashish Choudhury's uh, site, and you can you know you get a link to this. So, uh, because like you know, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we don't assume that the audience know a lot. So the lectures are going to be very basic. So we'll only try to select very you know high-level aspects of uh, uh, cryptography and then uh, present it. So, but uh, like compared to some of you, uh, I know that you know there are like research in, researchers in security and crypto who are attending. So probably what is something new we could offer is uh, we'll try to make it uh, their approach more uh, rigorous than what a traditional uh, crypto course will offer. So. Uh, this course and then uh, the full course, what I mentioned by Professor Ashish Choudhury, it's uh, largely based on the book called uh, Introduction to Modern Cryptography by Jonathan Katz and uh, uh, Yuhada Lindal. How many of you know about this book? Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. You know. How many have read it? Probably this could be slightly boring for you, but still, uh, let's see if we can, you know, still find it interesting. I'm sure what uh, 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 I, I definitely recommend you to, you know, visit the, this web page, you know, particularly the, the slides. Uh, uh, what uh, Professor Ashish Chaudhary has prepared are they, they're pretty, pretty good. So definitely recommend you to, you know, go and visit this site for extra information. So some other books probably you might be familiar are uh, Cryptography and Network Security by William Stallings. I'm sorry, maybe a bit too small. So this is by book by William Stallings. Many of you would know about it. And uh, other book, it's, again, it's a pretty classical text is Handbook of Applied Cryptography by <laughs> like um, Menaces, uh, Woodshot and uh, Van Stone. So, and the third book, uh, it's also classical text, uh, Cryptography. Uh, theory and practice by Douglas Simpson, uh, and the fourth book is pretty new. Like uh, it's by Professor Nigel Smart, so it's called Cryptography Made Simple. So the first book by Katz and Lindell, this like offers a very uh, like more mathematical rigorous uh, introduction to cryptography. Uh, these are all like these are more less uh, formal introduction, but still you know. Cryptography is just a part of information security, you know. So, so for a bigger perspective, probably uh, William Stallings is uh, is uh, uh, recommended. And uh, the last book, it's a mixture of uh, a theory and uh, you know, a more formal approach and uh, uh, and a non-formal uh, informal approach. But that's the latest book, and it contains many updates. So, I guess uh, everyone has received the handouts. Have you? Uh, okay. Does anyone have like spare handouts? M maybe for now you can share with your uh, colleagues and then uh, we can arrange some more for you. Okay. Cool. Good then. And uh, so. If you go to the uh, the course homepage, the full course homepage, yeah. so then you get several references, more many freely available online, like conference proceedings and uh, so on, and other uh, lectures, uh, other lecture notes, pointers to other lecture notes, and there are some very very good online uh, courses uh, on Coursera. I guess many of you would be familiar with that. So it's by one of them is by Dan Bonai. Like it's it's uh, the second most. In the, what I heard is it's the second most popular course in on Coursera after you know obviously machine learning. So machine learning tops the list and then it's crypto. So 
and there's another course by Katz, Jonathan Katz. Uh, he's the of the authors of this book. Good. So I guess you know, like, uh, so what's information security? So it's all just a study of techniques. You know, a definition cannot really capture what is information security. But just for the sake of it, you can define it as study of techniques to prevent uh, unauthorized access and use of information, you know, as generic as it can get. And of course, the need of information security, one surely everyone is going to appreciate, you know, in the age of uh, uh, the internet. So, what are the, it has many goals. So, what are the basic set of goals is confidential, confidentiality. So, if I, if I am communicating with you, then I, I don't want someone else who is not authorized to know what uh, what i'm communicating with you authentication you know so that's confidentiality authentication is uh, like if we are ta if i'm talking to you you should really know that uh, you know you should be sure that i am the person who i am you know i cannot you know, disguise as someone else and uh, talk to you that's authent authentication so data integrity whatever i send to you it should be you know it should reach you intact so no one in the middle should you know uh, manipulate your data and then non repudiation means it's uh, uh, non denial of commitment suppose if i commit to you something that i have sent you a message for instance you know i should not be able to later refute that you know that uh, i did not send you so this is called non repudiation you know i cannot deny my commitment so these are some basic goals so let's not get into details of this because the main focus is on crypto and what is crypto it's uh, a study of this uh, Techniques, but it gives some more mathematical uh, you know, foundation. Uh, I probably that slide uh, you can figure it out. It's like a copy paste error. I apologize for that. So it's not the same. Of course, it its goal is to achieve the the same goals, but it provides a mathematical foundations to achieve uh, the goals of information security. So this is like a mathematical core. It's not just mathematics. But this gives uh, like a, a core, you know, this sits at the heart of information security. So, so that's uh, cryptography. So probably you are all aware that, you know, crypto is used, you know, a lot in, uh, in the digital era. So as I mentioned, give you an example. Suppose you want to do a secure online bank tra uh, you know, transaction. Of course, you want the communication to be secure, right? In whatever, you know, define what is secure, but you can make out, you know, there has to be authentication, there has to be confidentiality, and uh, so on. And then, of course, another major use is I want to suppose encrypt, um, can I encrypt my the files on the disk, hard disk, you know, so that you suppose I lose it, then uh, someone who uh, gets access to it still cannot uh, uh, read the contents, you know. So, this for this, you know, definitely use encryption, which is a cryptographic primitive. And also ensure privacy. So encryption will uh, ensure privacy, but we also want uh, data integrity, right? So it could be encrypted, but still we don't want someone to manipulate on that encrypted data and then you know uh, manipulate the data. So we don't want that. You know, we want the data to stay intact. So if someone mo modifies it, then we should make sure that we we are able to detect and possibly even correct it. So these are and of course the. You know, user authentication, and this list goes on. So, so this is you know cryptography in a in a you know very 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 broad view. And not just in the digital era, the cryptography has been used even from uh, ancient times. The earliest uh, record we have is from the Roman times. So it seems uh, Julius Caesar used uh, what is called a Caesar cipher. It's simple, you know. If you have letters A to Z, then just shift it. Say A, you shift, you make it E. So just the shift by how many? Uh, B, C, D, and D by four letters. So B is going to become F, and C is going to become G, and of course Z is going to become. So it's as simple. So those times, you know, even people who are literates, uh, finding people who are literates could be hard at that time. So this worked, but of course this is no longer going to work in the digital era. But the point is, it has been used. I'm not aware of any, you know, use uh, from ancient India. I don't know, like, probably people were honest then. I don't know. <laughs> they, they did not need cryptography, I don't know. But uh, we have not found any uh, records. But of course, crypto has played a, a, a great
great role in the world wars you know so second world war kind of was decided uh, because uh, alan turing, turing and his team they could break this cipher called enigma how many have you of you have watched the imitation game movie oh okay okay so then i should be cautious you know so many no crypto already so <laughs> okay so s- traditionally in the 80s crypto focused on two core problems one of the core problems was uh, you know key establishment suppose if someone is sitting i am here in india and someone is uh, there in the us how can i how can we we can communicate you know the internet uh, there was already there but then how how can i you know establish the key you know that, that that's very important right so this people concern themselves uh, researchers concern themselves with this problem so let's take uh, rama or ram you want to call it rama and sita suppose they want to communicate okay so now so first they want their communication to be secure assume so then first is okay let's the basic is uh, so to give you a lock and a key analogy we have a lock probably we have a, like like more than one user for a lock the, the traditional lock you know the physical lock so we can uh, create uh, replicas of the key but suppose okay so now how do you share the key in the first place to communicate and there's an adversary in between now ramana he so wants to listen to this line you know uh, this message is conversation so how do you do it that's the first problem so moving on to the second problem okay suppose magically you know like so they say they, they are all avatars of uh, god right so then uh, suppose magically they know by intuition for instance now how do you make it the whole thing you know the the communication confidential and uh, ensure that you know the adversary in the middle does not change the data this was the second problem you know researchers concerned crypto researchers concerned themselves with uh, like 3 decades ago 3 or 4 decades ago but today cryptography is much more than these two application you know these problems have been solved very efficiently solved but then we have so many other primitives and i am only going to give you a very very uh, high level overview just to motivate probably i will get back into this advanced application towards the end of this uh, short uh, course so one of the applications of cryptography is uh, anonymous digital cash so first let's understand the properties of physical cash so okay so we have a document which is let's assume it's not easy to forge so okay that uh, because it's not easy to forge and forging is a criminal offense so this you know if you look at this piece of paper uh, and inspect its uh, qualities then you know okay this is your note fine so you are sure about the integrity of that uh, piece of note that's fine but an important property that uh, the digital uh, currency uh, sorry the physical uh, cash currency satisfies is its anonymity you know if i go and spend it somewhere so suppose you go to a, a restaurant you know you spend it there people can okay they accept it that restaurant guy knows that you know he you give him the money but he would hardly bother about uh, tracking from where it came you know in particularly if suppose you are a, a noted uh, uh, journalist and uh, you know uh, government wants to target you for some reason or other and suppose you are critical of the government policies you know it's not so easy for the government to go and track you know where uh, you know you all spent it you know? no one tries to maintain a ledger where you know which currency was with whom at what point of time so this our physical cash it provides anonymity and suppose we want to uh, and if we come up with a digital cash for example most of you might be familiar with what is called bitcoin so we want those currencies digital currencies also to uh, satisfy this property and there is no double spending and that's another important property of the our physical cash because why 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 it's not uh, possible to double spend you know because it's just you cannot replicate it you know you cannot put it in a photocopying uh, xerox machine and then you know just uh, get because that you how you know like people are all uh, educated enough to understand that you know it's not possible to 
counterfeit easily so these are two properties and these we wanted to replicate it for to the digital currency again so suppose you have a bitcoin so and you want to use it for shopping on flipkart.com say so you give it okay then flipkart fine flipkart will okay accept the money assume your communication is all authenticated and it's you know it's secure for instance suppose it accepts then ideally you don't want the flipkart to know like you know uh, who all have owned that coin before of course flipkart knows that you know you made the purchase order but we don't probably then flipkart is going to spend that coin somewhere else but we just don't want a process where the whole the transactions are recorded even if it is recorded it should not you one should not be able to trace back to who you know maybe who started the, who all have used the coin so this is the anonymity and another problem you know in the digital age it's so easy to you know replicate information and uh, distribute right so just do control c control v of course for the normal say uh, text for instance you know you can create multiple copies so if, for example for, for the book the hard copy of book it's not easy you know not yet you know it's not easy to just make it you know control c control v you cannot do that uh, i mean you have a process to go for that ultimately it will be traced back to its digital form then you can print it and make multiple copies so but here you know if it is in a digital format easy to replicate and then i i suppose i own only one uh, digital currency only one unit of digital currency i'll spend it here i'll spend it somewhere and uh, how to keep track of this so this is another problem with double spending you know so these are the two challenges to you know use adopt uh, digital currency in practice but crypto guys have solved this problem so this is what i meant you know i don't want to go and spend the same coin on in amazon so anonymity and uh, double spending they are conflicting goals suppose we had a maintained a ledger of who won this current this unit of currency at every point of time then from that uh, ledger you know one can uh, determine that but then is going to break your anonymity but turns out that you know cryptographers have solved this problem to a reasonable extent not fully solved but to a reasonable extent has been solved so that's one application don't worry if you can if you don't get the details you know the idea is just motivate you know that there are many advanced applications of crypto than just key establishment and and uh, secure communication another uh, advanced application of crypto is secret sharing suppose i have a secret suppose trump you know like uh, has uh, or a military general let's not take names you know he has uh, access code to launch a nuclear device you know so it's risky to be to have the secret with one person you know probably we may not fully trust that guy but we want suppose our policy is to have a set of people involved in uh, launching uh, you know in the process to launch uh, say a nuclear uh, missile so now what we what we, we one solution to this is share the secret into many parts say into say for example n parties so then then suppose we have a protocol you know where like a subset of them we can say like say at least n by 2 people they have to come together authorize this and then uh, uh, then construct the secret and that secret can be used to launch the, the nuclear weapon let's assume so now so for example here t you know so then it so here the threshold is t at least t people have to come together to construct the secret if it is less than uh, less than t okay t plus 1 let's assume so if it is less than t plus 1 parties so then they should have absolutely no clue about the the secret you know if they come together less than t plus 1 people then uh, you know they should not be able to construct any any even a bit of the secret key the secret key should remain you know uh, uniform and random and independent for any subset t so did you get the problem secret split into n shares t plus 1 have to come together not to reconstruct it and this problem has been solved so that's just you know another application of cryptography so th the so the third application like one one of the applications is zero knowledge protocols 
suppose there are two parties and this guy uh, the one on the left yeah of course yeah. he should be less than yeah. yeah 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 multiple people but it's just that t plus one have to come together to construct construct it so maybe if you said t to be n by 2, then there's a no, majority of the people should come together to construct the secret. That's the idea, yeah. If it is with one person, I, I might lose a secret, you know, for my, so if I share into many, even if you lose, then it's okay, you know, still there are enough you know, people to come together to construct a secret. But point is, they have to come together. Suppose, you know, probably some of you might know that, you know, if you have a, if you are, suppose this person on the left uh, claims that he has solved the factorization problem. Solving, suppose if you have a, give a number n, which is a product of two large prime numbers, say 1024 bit uh, prime numbers, you know. People believe that uh, factoring that and multiply, multiplying is easy, you know, we can multiply large numbers. But only given this number, the, the product is difficult to factorize, you know, and this is a very important problem in cryptography. And there are some crypto systems, if you, you know, solve this problem, then you are going to break many, you know, uh, crypto systems in use today. So, factoring a large problem is a hard problem. Suppose this guy claims that I have uh, discovered the method and he doesn't want to make it public because, you know, people, it can go into, you know, uh, malicious people and then they might misuse it. But he wants to announce it to the world that uh, I have uh, solved this problem. Can he do that? He wants to announce, of course, you know. <laughs> it's not just you announce that people are not going to believe. You want to announce and you want to give a proof of it, a reasonable proof, reasonable arguments, yet you should not reveal anything about the proof you have. Probably people you can guess because I have mentioned it as an advanced application of crypto. People have solved this problem. The protocol to uh, that's used is called a zero knowledge proof. You prove it that you have some knowledge, but the other uh, entities they will not you know learn anything about your proof. So that's the you know the the best uh, part of it. So he claims I know the prime factors of n. Fine. So of course the other guy is naturally going to ask, come on, prove it, and they are going to. And he's going to challenge, you know. So that's the challenge, right? And then they are going to start exchanging uh, messages. There's a protocol for this. And they, at the end, he says that, yes, I'm convinced, you know. This, uh, he knows the factors of n. But he will not be able to figure out anything of it. This problem has been solved. So then, systems are very Sorry? systems that use RSA encryption right now. Uh-huh. Why do you think so? Because you said they are No, 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 no. No, no, don't mistake. Suppose he, this guy claims, that's the question. In the future, someone claims that I have solved the factorization problem. Can he announce without revealing the prime factors is the question. Please note that I did not tell that uh, people have solved the factorization problem. No, no, no. It's uh, people believe it's a hard problem and many crypto systems in use today. Maybe your phone still, uh, they are using, you know, crypto system based on this. So I did not claim that they have solved it. So another application is uh, uh, outsourcing computation, you know. Suppose uh, my laptop, I want to run them very hard problem, factorization problem. Now, of course, people have not solved it, but some problem, you know. For example, I don't want to host an email uh, service from my laptop, you know. We use, uh, you know, uh, mail uh, uh, servers for that, right? For example, Google. So I have delegated, uh, like, they store my, uh, all my emails and I perform search on them. So basically, I give them a function, say search, they are going to search and return the queries. But then, suppose the laptop, you know, uh, so I delegate some computation because it's uh, computationally expensive to the, the server, for instance. 
so now and it's going to return me back the result now okay we believe we trust because probably we have no choice but or we have established trust through other mechanisms you know for example probably we might have like legal contracts and uh, so on but yet can we stick give a technological solution to this if the adversary is corrupted because and uh, you know like uh, there's no secrecy of my uh, input or outputs you know it knows what function i am computing what are my inputs because it's going to take those two things uh, it's going to compute on my behalf and uh, return me the result so i cannot keep my inputs and outputs private to private you know like so the cloud the adversary knows all the, all of these things and there's also no guarantee that you know whatever result it has returned uh, is is actually here why i'm not sure why is really f of x i just trust you know in many instances probably even in theoretical computer science they have solved this problem right for example uh, fingerprinting probably there are some techniques but uh, yeah just i posed the problem now so it turns out there's a primitive called uh, fully homomorphic encryption what is nice about that is you encrypt you don't give so of course you you tell what is the function is but you don't give the data as it is in the clear you encrypt it you make it a cipher text cipher text appear junks if you have used a reasonable uh, encryption scheme then the magic is i say magic because you know probably it might seem totally intuitive you can manipulate cipher text you know even in the encrypted form you can apply some operations you add to uh, encrypted data it will result in an encryption of the addition of the data if you multiply to uh, encrypted data it will it is going to result in a cipher text of the product of the underlying uh, messages so once you do addition and multiplication you can do any you know you can evaluate any function your uh, individual uh, you, want, you don't want others to know your colleagues to know your individual salaries is it still possible to compute the joint function here the sum of the salaries without revealing you know individual uh, salaries so this is a primitive uh, crypto primitive called uh, secure multi party computation protocol that takes inputs then you know it computes uh, function of this yeah and it's going to give back the result to all the parties involved but no others will not know my input other than what the function itself would reveal suppose there were only two entities they compute the sum because i know my input and i know the sum of two entities i can always compute the third this you cannot do anything you know this is a trivial problem now but suppose if it's a complicated function you have 100 people each other should not be able to reveal anything you know learn other than the total minus difference my my salary you know it's not going to learn anything about other inputs what the function itself would reveal so basically this protocol emulates a uh, trusted third party suppose you had one party here a uh, genie suppose it's very honest and you send all the inputs a trivial way to compute is you send all your inputs to a trusted third party it's going to compute the function and get back and give back the results right so i only know my input and i know the what is the function output i don't know anything other than that but the question is can i emulate this genie without uh, having uh, one in place you know i don't have a genie you know i should just interact with my uh, you know with the fellow participants and i should be able to arrive at this turns out that this has been solved and this is going to have a lot of applications you know like privacy preserving data mining you know uh, people have like many entities have their you know their databases can you mine on this together without you know i learning about others except what the function itself would reveal auctions so many 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 applications so there are so many applications and there are few set of core primitives like you know this one way functions or pseudo random generator we are going to very briefly discuss about these things so so these are all core primitives and you know and on top of them we have this encryption scheme key agreement scheme digital signature and then we have a whole lot of applications on uh, around this bit around this many 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 applications 
we talked about home office encryption, secret sharing, multi-party computation. And it's important to remember, it's not just mathematical design you know, of the schemes. What is important is to securely implement in practice. <coughs> Even if you have a very, very nice uh, you know, uh, scheme with very nice uh, mathematical analysis, if you don't implement it properly, then uh, it's going to leak. You know, there's no, no purpose served. So this is a very popular thing in crypto. You know? A chain uh, is only as strong as its weakest link. So you should make sure that you know there are no weak links at all. So it's very important to implement the uh, securely implement cryptographic primitives. Of course, we want efficient hardware and software implementations because you know we don't want to wait uh, in in front of your laptop. You know, suppose you want to spend your cryptocurrency, we don't want to wait for like minutes together. We want it all to be very efficiently implemented, right? So it's important to get efficient you know implementations to be as efficient as they can be. And as I mentioned, they should not leak uh, data through what are called side channels. For instance, you know, here is a cartoon that uh, depicts uh, adversary listening to the execution. You know, so of course, you know, like when I send a message over a public channel, uh, an uh, adversary will know, will only get the ciphertext. But if he has access to the device, he can get uh, much more. For instance, you know, it can measure the uh, time. Uh, uh, execution time of uh, of an implementation and it can you know get secrets uh, it can get information about the secret which is not uh, available if you assume the primitive to be just a black box you know it's possible to measure the power consumption so what you see here is uh, is a, a, a microcontroller that implements uh, uh, a cryptographic primitive for example your your uh, bank card, if it has a chip, it performs crypto, you know. On that, you uh, just put an oscilloscope, a probe, and then, you know, in principle, it's possible to measure the power consumption. So, it might be hard, you know, like we discussed factoring problems, ma some mathematical problems, you know, which are the basis of this crypto system, they could be hard to solve. But if it can do this and get some extra information, which is not otherwise available, it can, you know, readily, you know, you know solve, uh, you know, recover the secret key. So it's very important to securely implement. In fact, there are what are called fault attacks. So these things are not, you know, uh, some things that are possible in the future. People are already doing this, you know. They implement and they evaluate, they attack. So these are called side channel attacks. That's what I mean by SCA. It's also possible to inject faults, you know. Suppose if, uh, again, on a smart card, for instance, I will, uh, using a laser, a laser uh, you know, highly pointed laser, I'll just inject faults on it. And, uh, and I'll output the faulty, and I'll observe the faulty output. It's possible that, you know, it's, uh, it's possible to uh, get access. In fact, in fact, the factoring problem will be solved if you can induce fault in some certain settings. It's possible to solve the factoring problem, you know, without really uh, coming up with a breakthrough algorithm for it, just by inducing faults. People have done it. Not easy, but it's, you know, people have done it. So it's important, you know, cryptographic engineering, it's, it's a very important thing. So now you see a crypto and you know an implementation layer around it, and uh, the box you see is information security. You know, crypto is like you know it, it's a hard topic. You know, you, you need information. You know, ex people with expertise from various domains. Of course, you want you know people from you know uh, economics and uh, politics, social science. For example, I I want this. I mean, you should have enough loss that uh, enough uh, loss that. Uh, I don't beat up, uh, you don't beat up your colleague to, you know, uh, get the secret, you know. If there is no <laughs> rule like that, then uh, no amount of crypto is going to help, you know. Just want to extract a secret, go, uh, you know, uh, kidnap them, beat up and uh, extract a secret. If this is all legal, then there is no, nothing crypto can do. So you need policies for that, you know. So, and social science, you know, like even the, the uh, uh, whatever cyber terrorists, they, they they coerce people into revealing their uh, password, you know. So these things are all tricks, and it's important, you know. People all come together and uh, you know address this information security. It's it's very important. But but the best thing is, you know, if you have expertise in any of this, you still you can uh, contribute to crypto. <coughs>
So as mentioned, the core problem is uh, secure authenticated message communication, and then we have the special purpose encryption schemes. So digital signature schemes, and then crypto analysis is an important subtopic. So someone needs to be keep trying that you know whether our assumptions like factoring uh, big numbers is hard. You know, someone should be continuously evaluating. Who knows? Someone could come up with a breakthrough, and then then you know it's going to have a tremendous impact. And then secure storage, multi-party computation, whatnot. So that's uh, a very, very, very brief introduction to cryptography. So in the remaining, uh, in the rest of the lecture, I'll just introduce uh, symmetric key cryptography. So basically, how to achieve you know confidentiality and authentication. So again, let's back to the same. Go back to the same scenario. Suppose uh, Rama wants to communicate with Sita wants to communicate with Rama, and vice versa. So we all know that to generate a ciphertext message, M should be input. There should be a key that's input, and then you encrypt to get uh, what is called a ciphertext. And ciphertext on input the same key. In the symmetric key setting, both. The sender and the recipient, they will use the same key. So that's why the key has been marked as K. You know, it's the same key that's input. So we are not. Later, we'll address the problem of how to arrive at this uh, common key. But for now, you can assume somehow, you know, they come together. They have shared a, a common secret key K. And then we have this Raman, you know, sitting in the middle, <coughs> listening to all the messages, ciphertext. And if it is an encryption scheme, if it is reasonable, then you know, ciphertext will appear just like a scrambled message, and you should not be able to learn anything. I am going to make this precise. So as I mentioned, the same key is used for encryption and decryption. And it's important to be, you know, given uh, um, uh, to encrypt, you know, given the message and the key to encrypt and to decrypt, given the ciphertext and the key, this should be fast enough, you know. You don't want to wait years to encrypt or decrypt the message. Of course, the adversary should, you know, wait, you know, for years or maybe even uh, tens of years or even more. But if you have the key and the messages, so then uh, you should it, this the encryption, the decryption algorithm should run uh, fast. It should be efficient, whatever that means. As I mentioned, key increment is a big issue. So more formally, a symmetric key encryption consists of, uh, or it's also called a cipher. So encryption cipher, cipher is a collection of three algorithms, key generation, encryption, and decryption. So an user, probably using some randomness, is going to generate uh, a key, calling the gen key generation function. It's going to output a key. So let's assume that the math cal k is nothing but a set of possible keys ideally we randomly choose a key uh, from this set oh, oh, oh. oh i pressed sorry i pressed the wrong button uh, it went to the last slide i'm sorry for that So we have done this. Oops. Uh, yeah, here we are. Sorry. So, okay. So we ideally want to randomly pick up a key. Why? Why not? Why? Why randomly pick up a key? Sorry. It's going to be so more secure. Actually, we don't want to use keys like hello, right? It should not be easily be guessable. Okay, maybe I should use this. Okay. As I mentioned, it's a randomized algorithm. The key generation is going to output a random key. Then you have encryption that takes a message. Here it's represented. You need to represent message somehow, right? It's a assume it's represented as a bit string. And it takes a key, and possibly it can take additional <coughs> randomness. You know, maybe we want to make the ciphertext random, and then it's going to produce a ciphertext. So it's 
so this is what i this process is going to output c encryption on m and k is going to output c is assume the cipher text space set of all cipher text is uh, you know capital c and again we want it to be a randomized algorithm you know why why the encryption should also be randomized what what do you mean by randomized what are the inputs and yes good one okay so we don't want to give, get get the same cipher text why because if the adversary gets hold of a set of cipher text we can work it backwards and maybe get the plain text it can always match right suppose it has many plain text and cipher text pairs then uh, suppose the incoming cipher text is one of your already uh, cipher text in the in the list what you have uh, uh, you have got so then it knows that you know that's the corresponding message as easy as that and then decryption algorithm is uh, again takes us input a key cipher text and produces a message so on decryption it should output something from the message space m right mathcal m this m this is the message space so we should define what is the message space what is the key space and what is the cipher text space so your encryption and uh, decryption algorithms they are just mapping between these two you know these spaces but decryption we want it to be deterministic so this is the correctness requirement suppose if i encrypt the with a some key uh, using some key if i encrypt a message get a cipher text and using the same key if i decrypt the cipher text i should get back the message right we don't want to lose the message you know it's just for the you know, by encrypting we don't want to you know it should not be possible that i i lose the message so that's why you know key generation encryption they have to be randomized but uh, the decryption has to be always deterministic not that every scheme there are some schemes you know that allow error in decryption but they make it a very 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 small it's possible suppose if one in say a million messages i it uh, incorrectly decrypts but i can always ask the sender you know twice to check you know if it is possible you know so it's not strict uh, it, it's it's not that it's impossible to have a like uh, a randomized decryption scheme or decryption scheme that does not uh, satisfy uh, the correctness requirement 100% uh, it's just that you know traditionally we expect most of the schemes they have the decryption to be deterministic and uh, it satisfy the correctness uh, requirement with 100% probability that is you get back the message you you have encrypted yes please uh, sorry what does it violate data integrity is there is never been uh okay that's a good question but let me clarify here we are only talking about confidentiality if someone is listening to our conversation he should not be able to recover any i mean he should not be able to know what the underlying message is it's as simple as that we have not bought in uh, data integrity or authentication yet so here it's just the encryption scheme we are talking which will only guarantee confidentiality in the middle there could be an adversary that manipulates the data it's fine i mean first i'll solve this problem confidentiality so encryption i'm sorry you mean the encryption is not deterministic or decryption yes uh huh uh yeah, i mean we cannot give a generic answer usually the key would uh, suffice but it all depends on the design of the scheme right that's a very good question that's a very good question 
uh, maybe we, we i don't know we may not have time to talk about these things but it could you know ensure some properties for example uh, uh how can i tell that some properties which may not be satisfiable by i mean probably it can get you know there many may, there can be suppose if you want some property then it can happen that it can you know uh uh only by allowing decryption to be for example w w what is that um rabin's encryption scheme there's a scheme based on hardness of factoring uh, large integers there you cannot recover with uh, 100% probability you should have some additional information but but there are some scenarios probably it may not be the right place to discuss maybe we can take it offline but some some properties which you that cannot be easily satisfied probably it can be you know if you relax this requirement it can be satisfied there are some schemes that can do that so it all i have to give you a specific example and then uh, you know but probably it may not be suitable to present it now in fact one of your <laughs> i can refer to this problem set the third uh, question says you know uh, suppose uh, we have not talked about what is a perfectly secure encryption scheme we are going to talk about that later so if we relax this uh, requirement that uh, the correctness requirement is it possible to achieve a perfectly secure encryption scheme with uh, key space less than the message space so you know, that's a question so probably you can uh, think over and you yourself can give me the answer in the next lecture so okay so how to use a symmetric cipher again you know two parties they share a secret key which is only shared once suppose they somehow they meet together you know or they have already shared it before so then one of the parties executes the generation and they communicate to the other party using some secure medium somehow it's done then as i mentioned encrypt uh, using a key you get a cipher text send it over public channel you know a channel anyone can any adversary can uh, listen to the conversation and know the cipher text you know so that party decrypts the cipher text to get get back the key now we need to define you know like okay we just don't want to construct a cipher and just believe it to be secure you know we want to formally analyze so what should be the right security definition for the symmetric key cipher when we know that a given cipher uh, is secure or not or what has constitute if someone breaks the security if someone claims he, he or she has broken the security of the scheme what is meant by that so we need to make it precise right we would like like because the analysis is going to become easier we don't want to believe in you know just believe the designer and uh, you know uh, if he claims that it's just secure okay let's look at the first uh, definition a scheme we know it has to be is specified by three algorithms is called secure if an attacker cannot find the secret key looking at the cipher text adversary it was the cipher text was sent over the public channel adversary will know you know will see the cipher text he should not be able to recover the key so you think it's a reasonable uh, security definition hell no why because uh, the adversary has a cipher text and a plain text there, through which he can find out the plain text then so that is not to be good okay so recovering the key could be the what you say is is it's a good but it's not enough that's what you say right exactly so you you so so what i understand by your, by your argument is that recovering the message is more important than recovering the key you know recovering key could be an extra thing but what is important is not to recover the i will not say that but you know the plain text is uh, more the communication has to be confidential so the plain text is more important so okay let's see uh, let's take a trivial encryption scheme you know like it your message the cipher text is same as the message key could be random so basically it's not dependent on the key so given the message itself which is the cipher text you know it's just the, my encryption scheme is nothing but the identity function it takes the message and it outputs the message so looking at the message i cannot uh, tell 
what key I use, right? Because key is completely hidden. Basically, it's not used at all. So your key is perfectly, you know, uh, hidden, you know. Suppose if it is like a 100 or 128 bit string, it still remains completely random. But uh, the message is sent in the clear. What's the purpose of having uh, this cipher? So recovering key, this is a concrete example why recovering key is not enough. And decryption is trivial, right? Again, message becomes the same message. It's not a good scheme. So scheme is completely insecure. So let's throw it. Now, let's move to another definition. Okay, so now we have a scheme. So, if an attacker cannot find the plain text, M, means fully recover the plain text looking at the cipher text. You think this is, is this a good security definition? I heard yes. You know our in the assembly or the parliament voice votes are common. You know I say a no, so I somewhere heard a but. Uh, yes, sir, yes, she can be uh, retrieved then. Okay. In this case, we cannot uh, find the print just by looking at it. So you think if a cipher satisfies this property, that looking at a cipher text, you cannot recover the plain text in full, you think that's a good cipher is the question. Both plain text as well as key should not be retrieved. Well, I mean, why bother? I mean, here, the purpose of a communication, secure confidential communication is, I should be bothered about my uh, my uh, my message, you know, of course, you know, because we know that given key decryption is an efficient algorithm, of course, recovering key is also implied, but what is more important is the security of my message, you know. So, suppose you cannot recover the key, I give you a scheme where you cannot recover a key, but and also I say that you cannot recover the message in full. Is it a good uh, scheme is the question. Yes? Yeah. How many say yes? How many say no? Don't know? I think the majority. Vast majority is don't know. Okay. Uh, fine. So let's look at an example. Now, suppose I construct an encryption scheme where the first 10% of the cipher text is identical as the first 10% of the plain text. Rest all is completely assume is randomized, you know. Now, you think that, uh, no, you cannot, it cannot recover, you know. I give you guarantees that the 90% cannot be recovered. But you recover 10% because it's sent in clear, right? First 10%. You think it's, uh, we know intuitively it's not good, right? Suppose what if the 10% contained your password, you know, when you authenticate, you do some authentication, right? When you log into your net banking or any other thing. What if it contains the initial exchange, there's this password that, uh, uh, exchanged or uh, verified and then what if it is sent in the clear rest all could be encrypted but what's the point so recovering the message in full is not a good uh, security definition no no here again don't mistake we are only talking about the confidentiality of the message we want the communication adversary knows who is sending what no 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 who are communicating it knows but the question is, can we protect our information is the concern here. Don't mix up many, there are many other security objectives. Here it's just the confidentiality what we are talking about. So, but it can hear 10%, first, uh, like if it is say, 1000 bits long. Uh, so you are proposing another definition, right? But you all agree this is not a good definition. Yes. The first 10% is as plain text, isn't it out of the purview of the cipher text itself, cipher system? The cipher system doesn't act on the first 10% at all. No. Uh, yeah, but but again, fine, fine, but my security definition does not uh, capture that, right? So you need to modify it. No, the, the amount that the cipher system is acting on mm -hmm. is secure. Yeah. 90% that it's actually only secure. I understand, I understand, fine, I, that, that, that's right. but. But mathematically speaking, some message has been manipulated to 
from the you know message has been manipulated to cipher text that's how i have defined it i have defined it i know i know intuitively you know that's not right but i'm saying that mathematically we are what's the problem here we are mathematically formulating what this the security is but now i have to clearly tell what is my transform how the message gets uh, transformed to the cipher text and still some properties can it achieve the property of confidentiality that's what we are trying to formalize it so here if i define that the cipher text is 10% plain text and the rest all whatever some manipulated thing is that secure is the question or not is it convinced no if i okay here message become a cipher text right what was how that cipher text uh, happened 10% was in the clear rest all some junk has happened so basically mathematically speaking i have transformed my message to a cipher text m to c right message m has become c whatever the definition is the first uh, like 10% of c is same as m that's my definition a mathematical is a function right encryption is a function so now what our definition said that it should not be able to recover the whole m given c if any function that satisfies then i am defining my uh, secure to be secure that is my proposal of course given c you cannot recover the whole m right what you can only recover is 10% of m easily you cannot recover uh, assume that you know you cannot recover the rest 90% so it has satisfied uh, it has satisfied my definition right given c you should not be able to recover m of course i did not recover m but i recovered a related m prime where i have i found some correlation between m and m prime so now question is so so that shows that this definition is not secure so recovering the whole message it's not enough it's satisfied i should not be able to recover even a part of the message so let's throw this definition out clear clear okay we'll we'll talk about it later okay so now third definition an attacker given the cipher text should not be able to find any character of m so now this is nice right this has taken care of the previous example where 10% in the clear of course no no plain text is going to appear as it is right so now the looking at the cipher text it should not be able to determine any bit or any character of the plain text that's already something nice right so now do you think this is a secure definition <coughs> why so are you assuming that i'm going to give many you know wrong definitions and then i yeah you cannot recover any bit of the yeah we assume the scenario is very you know when we define an attack the scenario has to be very clear this adversary will not get access to the key if key is recovered then it can decrypt it you can use the decryption algorithm you know we don't want you no know, you should assume that your so the scenario is very clear what what does it say given looking at the cipher text c so what is given is only the cipher text probably it, have, it might have knowledge of how the gen encryption and decryption works but it has no knowledge of the key so given only c i ensure my scheme does not recover any bit of m is this a good security definition is my question good how many say yes oh okay no 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 oh so don't no can't say okay so uh okay let's look at this so consider an encryption scheme where cipher text does not contain any plain text fine but reveals whether the underlying plain text is greater than a certain value or not so you m got modified to something you know which is looks completely unrelated but somehow you can tell that i'm not telling how you can do that assume a hypothetical uh, a scenario suppose it can say whether it's greater than 0 or not you know uh, then or greater than suppose salary you know you encrypt your salary but still you are able to tell whether it's greater than like uh, like 100000 or whatever or 1 million 
uh, you already started leaking some information right so you will not be able to recover even a single bit of the of the your salary but you can always say whether it's greater than or not not so again so just so you know i suppose you want to transfer your black money you know uh, what is important okay suppose uh, it reveals whether it's greater than few crores or whatever you know if you can then you know not this is sending black money you know in a large sums this you don't want to require though people may not know the precise figure you know this again so let's throw this security definition it's not good one more you know no i i'm trying to tell this step by step so that you know you will get start thinking you know it's it's not just assume you know there is a message and you know just learn the algorithm it's it's important to you know reason out what is the you know is it really secure or not in what scenario so it's it's important that's why i'm slowly motivating this thing okay so next definition i give you a cipher and say that uh, an attacker uh, cannot find any meaningful information about the plain text so here it was meaning in the previous example so if your salary or whatever amount you are transferring out of the country is greater than or not is a meaningful is a meaningful information right so suppose if i say that uh, if an attacker cannot find any meaningful information about the underlying plain text just looking at the cipher text now the problem is uh, uh fine but uh, how do you define what is meaningful each application has its own uh, uh, notion of uh, you know if i am a layman why i am bothered about someone uh, a millionaire sending a you know uh, sending a money out of uh, the country or not probably i'll for curiosity i would be more knowing what is how much money he is sending so i mean so depending on the application what is meaningful or not suppose if you are cleaning an uh, elephant washing an elephant only those parts those who are concerned with you know for washing they find only those parts meaningful you know so you there is no notion with this very vague definition meaningful information you cannot capture it's not formal enough to uh, guarantee what is the you know it's not easy to specify what is meaningful information and we want a definition that is application independent you know so so then it comes uh, next comes a definition uh let's look at this uh, uh an encryption cipher uh, is called secure if an attacker cannot compute any function of the underlying plain text by looking at cipher text so given c this is different from the previous don't mistake it with the uh, a uh, previous uh, definition where i said it's meaningful information did i specify what is meaningful information here i am telling precisely if i if i give you c you cannot come able to compute f of m for any f f is a function what is a function function is mapping between two sets right so function on the message is message to some other it greater than say for example in one scenario i mentioned that the whether the message is greater than or equal to some value so that you can always map it as saying map it if it is 1 then it means it's greater than a threshold if it is 0 it is less than or equal to a threshold i can always specify these things as a function right so given c you cannot compute any function f of m any function any arbitrary function it's difficult you know f can be any any arbitrary function but still if i construct a scheme and prove that you cannot compute any f of m this this looks awesome you know like this means you cannot it's not going to reveal any thing any, any any partial information about your uh, uh, underlying message by partial information again i don't mean a particular bit that's not right any information for that matter good so this is the definition we are going to stick to but again you know it's still it's not clear you know function from what to what uh, okay so because we cannot get into all the details it's just said that there is a way to rigorously specify the security definition that's all you need to appreciate for now and then now we it's not enough you know like and we have to define what the attack model is what the adversary knows what it does not know what all resources it has everything has to be formally specified it's just one scenario i have mentioned here and always 
defining formally defining the security of crypto systems is it's a very difficult job you know it's it's not a easy job for one application it might seem lock a but for some other application so now one should have a good idea of practice it's not just theory or math it one should have a good idea of practice and you should it should be possible to you know encompass as many scenarios as possible if you are scheme has to be used like uh, widely so three principles we are not it fully formally specified you know but so one should understand the three principles of modern cryptography uh you might wonder what is modern or not modern but uh, earlier like getting an encryption scheme itself was not a you know easy thing you know in the digital era but now over over decades things have evolved and people now precisely present you know define the security construct and in fact they formally analyze you know the security of these things so by modern cryptography i mean that is i mean that process through which you know the crypto systems are formally specified and analyzed so as i mentioned we should have a precise security definition we arrived at one for the symmetric key cipher but still you know attack models can be in in the in the five definitions i presented in the previous scenario the adversary was assumed was assumed to know only the cipher text what if you know we earlier we discussed uh, some cases where it has many uh, plain text and cipher text case so attack models itself are plenty you know so for each attack model we should really specify what the what the security definition is and we'll try to do it as much as we can and many times it's to get an efficient scheme there is probably no scheme that is unconditionally secure you know if you want to design a scheme that unconditionally secure we are going to see soon that it may not be even possible to design it so it's based on assumption earlier we spoke of factoring large composites is hard right so based on this assumption we have cryptographic schemes you might still able to analyze that you know everything else is secure about the scheme except this assumption but still that is good why because then i i can just concentrate my effort on verifying whether this is assumption is true or not right so i need not bother about uh, you know analyzing the scheme from scratch i can just focus on the assumption so you should precise, precisely tell what are the assumptions that made that has been made and the third is you know we want some proofs again it may not be unconditional proof of security but so usually these proofs are reduction based so for example a typical security theorem would look like this if some assumption is true for instance the factoring problem if factoring large random composites is hard so then the construction is secure according to whatever definition of security we are going to give so this looks like a mathematical statement it has some assumptions but still it's good you know everything is clearly specified so then uh, the the proof will always follow this strategy so simple you assume some assumption is true and then uh, you constructed the, a construction y that is secure according to some definition so now for an attacker uh, an attacker for y he is used to violate the assumption uh, x so in order to prove this statement true so what you do is you assume there is an uh, attacker that attacks the crypto system y according to this security definition then you use it to find an attacker for the problem underlying hard problem x so then uh, that shows that uh, okay so this assumption uh, so you it leads to contradiction but our assumption says you know oh and maybe over decades we have tested that assumption so because that assumption is true the consequence cannot be true as simple as that again i mean don't worry if you don't get the details i'm just telling the what are the steps you know uh, involved in the design and analysis of a cryptography scheme at a very high level so now let let's look at uh, common attack uh, models you know so each attack uh, model uh, captures a real uh, life attack scenario so cipher text only attack earlier we were discussing that right uh, given a cipher text see it should not be able to recover but there we assumed only one cipher text so it has uh, so here the attacker has, has access only to cipher text nothing more and the goal is to uh, determine the underlying plain text again any function of the underlying plain text you should remember that when i mean that it's determine the underlying plain text so two parties they assume they have a common shared secret key 
so now many messages are encrypted need not be one you know with the same key many message have been encrypted many cipher text as many cipher text are generated now adversary in the middle can look at all the cipher text <coughs> maybe you can all have a dictionary where it has like message corresponding cipher text it can absorb many uh, it can have a big list of the cipher text but note that this is this attack nature is passive means it's not interfering with the communication it's just passively observing the communication it's going to make a copy of all the cipher text but it's not going to make you know uh, manipulate the cipher text it's sorry yes okay so it's not going to interfere in the communication means not going to manipulate the the uh, messages sent but it's just it's curiously it's listening that's the cipher text only attack we we can have even a more uh, inward scenario where it knows many uh, plain text and the corresponding cipher text so here the the, the dictionary attack um, that is the having a list of plain text and corresponding cipher text this does not come come under cipher text only attacks what it has is only a list of cipher text it does not know any underlying message that's the cipher text only attack in the known plain text attack the dictionary case uh, comes in so here so attacker has access to several plain text cipher text space it knows what is this plain text and what is this cipher text and it's in encrypted with the same key so uh, attacker knows all this you know all this many pairs somehow is possible is the question see all encrypted see for a one trivial instance is uh, for example you encrypt uh, you know uh, message to get a cipher text after some point uh, probably after it has lived its uh, you know uh, validity then you you want to make it public you know you so in those scenarios it definitely eventually you are going to reveal what what was the message sent so so then it knows the message and the cipher text pairs when it was sent the adversary may not know the underlying message but later on the parties after its use has been done it can always make it public right so then but the adversary would have already uh, you know stored the cipher text now it can uh, associate the corresponding plain text this is definitely possible and many times we in a communication we send a trivial uh, messages like we always start with hello dear or whatever and it's not hard to guess you know what is the underlying plain text so probably what is important in the communication is the later uh, you know uh, parts of the message they could be uh, that the senders they want to keep it uh, confidential so now the here the challenge is now given some other new cipher text it can uh, whether it can recover the underlying message is the is the goal here it has collected this list now it people communicate with the same key and it gets a new cipher text of course it gets but still if it gets the old cipher text it's not you know if your uh, encryption algorithm is all randomized for some other key you might get the same cipher text you might not be able to recover but assume for the same key you get a new cipher text you should not be able to reveal the underlying uh, plain text it knows so it should compute what it does not know again this is passive in nature here again it's collect, it's not in tampering with the communication you know the line it's just passively it's observing so this is known plain text attack <coughs> then we have even a, like a more powerful uh, scenario where it's chosen plain text attack so here it has gets somehow access to the encryption we call it oracle because it cannot suppose even if it knows the encryption function without knowing the key it cannot compute the cipher text right so somehow somehow we suppose uh, we assume that it gets access to this uh, encryption oracle now it's it's possible to get uh, encryption of messages of its choice in the previous scenario it did not have control over what messages uh, it was getting but it just got the message and cipher text pair here it is uh, getting uh, you know encryption of uh, uh, messages of its choice so yeah many messages and uh, 
So it's going to query, you know, the adversary is going to query and it's going to get it. In reality, it's possible, you know, it's, can you give me an example where this could be possible? Good point. So, so, so here you get, uh, so where do you get the message and the safer text? Yes? Suppose if I am transferring some amount to bank, yeah. and I am observing the packet, I am observing the data packet, uh, packet which is sent. Okay. And if I change the amount only, I am taking to the same procedure. Okay. And the data which is sent is only that amount. Ah, uh, but okay. So here your goal is to observe uh, the uh, transactions of other parties, right? But the key is going to change in that scenario. So okay, you said as you said, you you know what messages you are encrypting. So that, uh, I can get the key for the entire transaction. I can change the other one. Uh, this is not clear. Maybe I, what I understood is, okay, you encrypt your uh, communication to your bank. You have control over the amount transferred, but you don't have control of, but if someone else is going to use a different key, right? Under the same key, you should be able to observe, give message of your choice and then observe the separate text. Homework. Think about this and uh, tell me in the next, le next lecture. So that's the chosen plain text attack scenario. So now it has a list of messages of its choice and the corresponding ciphertext. A new ciphertext, it should be able to, you know, uh, learn something about, it should not be able to learn something about the underlying plain text. And then, but this is going, this is an active attack, right? Because it's going to send messages, get the encryptions. It's not just listening to some conversation. It's going to, you know, push its own messages and then it's kind of tampering the communication, right? So that's why it's an active attack. Finally, we have this chosen ciphertext attack, you know. Not just the encryption oracle, it has decryption oracle also. It can give some ciphertext of its choice and it can get back the messages. So it has access to both the encryption and the decryption oracle. So, it's not just the encryption, it's also, you know, it can ask for decryption, you know. Take some ciphertext, decrypt, and ask for decryption. It cannot do it itself because it doesn't know the key. But now, you know, it can ask for decryption. Again, homework, think about scenarios and tell me in the next class. It's just running out of time. So now it has ciphertext. Look, note the order. Here C1 comes first because it... Of course, it also, it can do the message of its choice, get the ciphertext, but also it can first send the ciphertext and get the corresponding message. It can do that. And this is considered one of the like, you know, the most comprehensive attack model because it's the most powerful compared to other three models, right? Attack models. So this is the homework. Is it possible to get decryption Oracle service in reality? Again, if it comes, is a new cipher text encrypted under the same key k it should not be able to recover anything any information about the underlying plain text that's the chosen cipher text attack model so this is what i so what c here c you see is a new cipher text good so we saw cipher text only attack where it only sees cipher text non plain text it knows message and ciphertext pairs, but it does not have control about uh, what messages were uh, were, it, uh, were chosen. And then next, the chosen print text attack scenarios where it can choose the messages of its choice and then get the corresponding ciphertext. Here is chosen ciphertext where it can choose the ciphertext of its choice and get the decryption. So clearly, this, <laughs> like, so this is the increasing order of uh, attack complexity. If you can prevent uh, your uh, cipher if, if it is resilient against this attack, then it's the most secure. Again, choice of ciphertext depends on the application. It, not necessarily you use this because there's always a trade-off between efficiency and uh, security. There's always. 
you might use a very strong uh, uh, very secure scheme but if it is slow and it does not ne it's not needed for your application then there is no you know you need not uh, you know probably you can use a less uh, secure scheme to get uh, better efficiency good uh, there are some principles uh, uh, that only the key should be secret not the encryption decryption algorithm itself so this is called uh, this principle though it appears trivial it's it's given a name it's called kirchhoff's principle so the cipher method must not be required to be secure the your key generation encryption decryption algorithms they have to be public and the secrecy should only rely on the key that's what i said yes so why is that so if you make the encryption algorithm itself confidential uh -huh. then there is a lot of problems that are right okay i'm going to come back to this that's what i'm going to address next what what are the arguments in support you know maintaining the privacy of a shorter key is much easier than you know your description of your algorithms is much the bigger the secret it's more headache to maintain right so now if you just if secrecy is only depends on the key then it's easy one of the reason i'll i'll tell you many other reasons your key could be 100 bits but program could be to 100 times uh, bigger than that so it's easier to maintain a secrecy of a key than that of a program and algorithm can be leaked somehow it can get leaked and it can be you know and uh, it could be even reverse engineered you don't have control over it and now ease of replacement if you think your key is compromised just replace the key but otherwise you have to throw out algorithm and design a new algorithm you know securely implementing and guarding against you know uh, bugs is not uh, easy you know it's, it's difficult you know in writing a piece of code is not too trivial and it's not possible you know every uh, pair of parties having their own uh, algorithm and keeping that secret it's not possible so just have one public cipher well known whose security is analyzed just the secrecy should repair, uh, you know depend on the key and then what are the advantages of open cryptographic design so you know publish design undergo they, they better go undergo public uh, scrutiny you know just take a example of linux versus windows and better for security flaws to be revealed by ethical hackers than uh, you know uh, cyber terrorists and as i mentioned code engineering reverse engineering is a serious threat you know it's possible you know people have reverse engineer so many things but the key it has to guess you know if you somehow you are convinced about the security of the scheme then your key remains strong it's not easy to guess it's not it, you cannot reverse engineer a key and public designs na you know enables establishment of standards you can make standards you know we have n number of algorithms then you know it's not easy and our uh, the rapid pace at which applications have got deployed thanks to the standards and for that this algorithms have to be made public and the implementations you know should conform to the standards and remember dangerous to use a proprietary scheme not in crypto okay so then i think i'm running out of time uh, <coughs> i want to discuss what is perfect secrecy probably your handouts uh, you may not be able if you are new to these things you may not be able to solve the problem set but then we'll look at it in the the next class okay yeah thanks for your attention